Okay, now that we have that unit of measurement fiasco all worked out here, we're ready to finally take a tour of the InDesign interface. As you can see, there's a whole lot happening here inside the interface. I hope it isn't too overwhelming for you here, and I'm going to try and boil it down and simplify it as much as I can here for you. So here we go. We're going to take a, a look at the interface here, and this is probably going to be broken up into a number of different lessons here, but I'm going to start off right across the top of the InDesign interface. Of course, we have our menu bar here going right across the top there. If you want, you can familiarize yourself with some of the different commands and options we have available inside the InDesign menus there. Lots of menus, lots of commands, lots of good stuff to explore. Now on the PC side, the main menu here is actually integrated into the application bar. And on the Mac here, as you can see, the application bar actually resides below the menu. Now the application bar, I don't actually really use all that often. There's a lot of, in my humble opinion, redundant commands here. For example, we have a zoom drop down menu so we can change our zoom level. I'll show you some faster ways for zooming in just a little while. We have some different view options here. For example, we can toggle the display of rulers and guides and so on. And again, I'm gonna show you a much faster way for uh, turning a lot of these, these items on and off. But again, you might wanna familiarize yourself with these guys here. We have our, our different views and finally the different way that we can view documents, right? Floating all in windows and, and this sort of thing. So that's pretty easy stuff. You can mess with this if you want, but. Again, I usually don't bother with, with those settings myself. And then way over on the right-hand side, we have a drop-down menu for our different workspaces. Now, if you know about workspaces from your other applications, Photoshop has workspaces, Dreamweaver has workspaces, and so on, you can actually access your workspaces from this drop-down menu here, which is actually kind of usable and kind of cool. So sometimes I will use this drop-down menu here. Okay, so hopefully no worries there. We also have the CS Live. We have a, uh, our little search field there as well. Hopefully no big deal. Now, below the application bar, and in my opinion, much more important than the application bar, is this fella right here, this strip of controls that runs horizontally right across our screen, our control bar. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on here, but a lot of it is grayed out. A lot of it we can't access because we haven't created anything yet on our page. But as soon as we start creating objects, text frames and shapes, and we start throwing in some text and so on, suddenly this control bar springs to life. And how he works is he's dynamic. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, I throw down some text on my document, right? Well, all of a sudden, we're going to get text-related options showing up on our control bar. If I go and grab maybe an imported Photoshop file, well, I'm going to get object-related options across the top of the interface here, across this control bar, right? So it's dynamic. Depending on what you have selected, you're going to see commands and options showing up across the control bar. So keep your eye on this guy. And maybe once we actually start working with stuff, I'll show you more uh, settings and, and a lot of the different things that we can do here on the control bar. All kinds of stuff like setting the width and the height, the X and Y coordinates, the rotation angle, flipping, all kinds of stuff. Setting the stroke weight, special effects. I mean, it goes on and on, right? Lots of great stuff there on the control bar. Okay, so hopefully no big deal. Now, in the next exercise, what I want to do is I want to walk you through the toolbox inside InDesign. So let's go and check that out.